All right, aspiring agency owner. Today is day two of the workshop that I did directly with Go High Level into their audience, and now I want to release it to you, my audience. Day two is going to be a doozy, and here's what I'm going to be covering in day two. I'm going to be talking about, uh, first I'll be recapping really quickly about yesterday, uh, day one that I posted on my YouTube channel, and then today I'm also going to be talking about why go high level? And I'm going to tell a story that I haven't told, uh, actually, really to anybody except my closest people, obviously my business partner, because it was all business related. But you're going to see a collapse of a beast. Uh, and it starts in 2020. You're going to go through about five to seven minutes of a story. And I think it's important to understand the power of go high level and how go high level changed and saved our business. And I'll go through that. Then we're going to go into a walkthrough of the reputation management setup in go high level. Uh, this is the new and improved one. So any past ones that I've done on my YouTube channel, it's it's similar, but this one is actually better. And then I'm going to tie in artificial intelligence and AI and auto responding with just a click of a button in Go High Level. I'm going to walk through that. And then I'm going to go um, kind of at the end, explain any bonuses that you might be looking for. And so, yeah, it's action packed and it's about two hours long. And then uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll get day three up. It takes a very long time to render these videos. And since I'm talking about things that take a long time, it also takes a long time to build this channel. So if you're not a subscriber of mine, do me a favor and, and, and subscribe to this channel. We've got a lot of great things coming up in the very near future. I try to post one to two times a week. And now that workshops and challenges and all that stuff are done, uh, I will be much more consistent on this channel. And make sure that you share this video for anybody else who might find it uh, worthy of watching. Like the video pushes it out to YouTube. And I think that's all I got. So let's get into day two. You're going to get a lot out of it. Enjoy. For those of you who were on yesterday, give me a one in the chat if it was useful. I want to see like Paul Paulson keeps telling me that he he wants me to make sure you guys are engaged. So part of my job is to make sure you guys are engaged, engaged, engaged. So if you were there yesterday, how, put a one in the chat if um, oh somebody put one, 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 one. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And so, again, let me just, instead of going all the way back, I'm just going to recap, because remember, yesterday we started with the end in mind, and we reached the end. Again, it comes down to choosing the niche in the beginning that is the closest to you. What can you capitalize right away? Friends, family, wh wh what business have you worked in in the past, if you have? Um, you know, wh where is the fastest way to land a trial client. That is what we're looking, we're not looking to pick the best niche. You'll be stuck for 90 days. You'll be stuck forever, actually. I know people that will spend years trying to figure out their niche. They give up, they come back, they still can't pick it, they give up. This is not about that. Look in your inner circle. We talked about that post yesterday. I don't know if anybody posted um, on their Facebook page. So we could also say, did anybody post on the Facebook, on your Facebook page, that arms reach method that we talked about? I'm just curious, put a put a yes in the chat if you did. Again, finding warm market leads is the fastest way to get this agency. Now, why is it uh, get this agency started? Why is it the fastest way? The fastest way is because when you follow this process, you you get a trial client, you do a qualification interview, you close the trial, you onboard them, you get them on a retainer. So that process of the from trial to retainer is the most important thing to happen. You are to do everything in your power to get them the most possible results as fast as possible and make them extremely happy. That's it. Get them on a retainer, onboard them through through time in the right process. You upsell and ask for referrals. That's the process. And if you do it right once, that's all it takes is once. Because a happy client can feed you forever. They can continuously feed you forever. They give you one or two referrals. You make one, one of those people happy, one of those businesses happy. Then you ask them for a referral. And it's the inner workings of, as I say, Amazon, the flywheel. <laughs> Just keep coming back. All right? So that's the recap. Now, it is extremely important, guys. And, and I hope you don't mind that I go in 10 minutes. Jason doesn't know I'm about to do this, but he's going to cringe when I go through this. <laughs> ten, 10 minutes to give a quick backstory of why go high level. And it's important that you guys understand why we are 
so gung ho and have so much passion around a tool. Like if you if you think about it, you know, a lot of you guys from the outside that you maybe you're just getting started. You know, you're probably like, oh, you know, wh why why go high level or why can't I go over to click funnels or why can't I, I go over to wherever, wherever, right? There's tools out there. And so it's important to tell this quick backstory. You guys okay with that? You give me 10 minutes to before I start sweating and implementing all this stuff. You guys cool with that? Give me <laughs> give a us yes. A, give us a one in the chat or a yes. Um, by the way, James and Jason, you might be pleased to see some of these comments. Christian said, hey, I posted yesterday, did your homework. I got six intro calls booked. Um, I mean, there's a ton of people that said yes. Um, yeah, we've got a ton of yeses here on a quick. Uh, yeah, the power of wide. simplicity. Yep. Power of simplicity. All right. It all started back in March of 2020. Everybody remember those times? I, I, I hate to relive those moments uh, because it, it you'll see why. So let me go back to March of 2020. I don't need to say what happened. We all know what happened. This was a, a screenshot that I took when I was booking my flight to San Diego. Jason and I were holding an event in San Diego. 280, 290 people paid tickets. They weren't cheap tickets, $1,000 plus tickets, okay, to learn, you know, things that we teach, the, the marketing agency, paid ads, all those good things. And I didn't even know what was going to happen. I didn't even know what was happening, to be honest with you. I, it just kind of brushed off, oh, I heard this stuff. And then I go and book my flight, and it's telling me that there's travel restrictions. And so I had a room to fill, all right? All these people were supposed to be flying. They were coming from Australia. They were coming from Canada. They were coming from South Africa. I, all over the world, they were flying in, spending money. And we started to get messages like, hey, I'm not allowed to fly there. And, and I remember thinking to myself and talking to Jason, I'm like, well, I don't understand. Like, I heard something was going on, but we're busy working. We're doing our stuff. And... I didn't worry as much as I probably should have worried, but I think it was the morning that I was supposed to leave. My wife decides not to go. She was supposed to go. She's like, listen, like the news is going crazy. I don't want to, we have two kids. I don't want to get stuck. Both of us stuck there. She's like, I'm going to elect not to go. Thankfully, 260 people showed 250, 260. We had a lot of speakers. Um, it was great. It was a great time. Okay. And you, and you guys hosted that event, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. We hosted okay, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Our event was March 6th to the 8th in 2020. About 230 people showed. All right. And then I came home to this. <laughs> it was like I was in another world. Nobody talked about it. Everything was still open. Everybody was going everywhere. And I remember I come home and what my wife's like, we can't get any toilet paper. We can't get any, we can't get anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what is the world ending? I had no idea. Okay. And so, you know, I hesitate showing numbers, but it's important to show this kind of stuff because I think you guys need to understand that the internet shows bliss. The Instagram shows, you know, all these people, they make it so much money. You know, they it's they make it seem so easy, right? Like everything is always butterflies and rainbows. But that's not the case. We're all humans. We all go through the struggles. You know, I struggled like crazy starting this business. Jason went through his struggles with two failing businesses before he chose marketing. This is life, right? This is this is life is not always up, 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 right? You got to come down eventually when you come up. Well, we came down, we came down real hard. This was February of 2020. I never in a million years could have guessed was what was going to happen. Take a look at March. Well, March, you know, about half the month got eaten away, right? Now, think about this. We we have, and, and maybe some of you guys have gone through this in your agency. The world shut down. Businesses were the, were the first things that were affected. And we're marketing for businesses that no longer are open. And what's the first thing they're going to do is say, I'm done paying you because I got no more money coming in, right? And so a slow and steady decline of money, that's like a like a 80% decrease from uh, March, February, we're flying high all the way to July of 2020. And the worst part, was I just bought a shore house with my father and I just bought an 80 unit part. I literally drained most of my bank accounts to buy these investment properties. 
in February of 2020. And now the business is declining. No uh, businesses aren't showing up to the to the calls to you know for client calls and stuff like that. Everything's falling apart. And so panic sets in. And Jason was the only one that was calming me down. But I'm like, I don't understand how you're calm. I'm like, <laughs> I, like I'm panicking. Like, like, do, do we burn the ships? Do we give up? Like, what do we, do I go back to teaching? I mean, maybe I need to go get a, like a guaranteed paycheck. All all these crazy things are are going through my head. So we found a solution. Now, Go High Level was the solution because it enabled us to cut our monthly costs drama dramatically. And I'll go through, you know, uh, Paul, so you asked me to kind of go through Go High Level dashboard and stuff like that. So I'll do that um, because we had a big idea. And what we did was this is what we came up with. And I have the paper right here. I saved this. This was probably, I want to say May or June of 2020, where we said, all right, we got to get rid of the people that we don't need. We got to cut costs, ma maximize our, the money that's actually coming in and stop sending it out. And at the time, we actually had two softwares that we owned ourselves, Truly, True Review, right? They did, we built it even before Go High Level, which is something that we needed and our, let our students use. True Lead was our auto follow up. And true review was rep management, right? And so we were people were paying for those. We were running that stuff. And then we had our autoresponder was 800. And I don't know if you guys could see the blue, but it was $896 a month. Our texting was $160 a month. Our funnels were $297 a month. Websites, forms were 19. Surveys was 29. And you could see I wrote in black like what the companies were. Uh, calendars, schedule ones, we were paying like 700 bucks, maybe even more at some point. CRM pipeline, 800 with pipe drive, Zapier, because everything was had to come into one system. <laughs> GMB management was 20 a month. Kajabi was 119. Manny chat was 15. You see where I'm going with this, right? And so the fastest way to cut this amount of money was to move to go high level. This is why we moved. We didn't move. We heard about go high level. We had we knew students were using it at the time, and it didn't. We didn't actually look at it until we said, "Well, we could save fifty grand a year if we move, about fifty grand a year, right?" So we cut four thousand three hundred forty-two dollars a month of tools, as well as people that were helping us make sure it wasn't falling apart because everything was tied together, Zapier and all this stuff. For a measly 297. That was the first plan that we were on, the 297 plan. We went from 4,000. Now, I want you to think, like, really think about that. For those of you who are new and don't understand much of this, back in the day, but not too long ago, when you were running a marketing agency, you were running it with this, you know, 90% of it. This is what you were running your marketing agent agency with. Even in our coaching program, if you could imagine, imagine teaching people all of these things. Right. <laughs> and the crazy part is people still got a lot of success running the agency. You just figure it out. Right. And then we were able to cut it down to a measly 297 bucks a month. That's the, that's the opportunity. Right. And so the best parts of that was it increased our agency client profits. It increased our speed of implementation. Like think about going to a trial client and saying, Hey, Here's the service that I'm going to run. You click a snapshot that, again, trial, people get on a trial, you're going to get at some point, I think at day three. And you literally start delivering them reviews within 30 minutes, like Jason said yesterday, within a, depending on when they get you the stuff, let's say a few days, right? Increased speed of implementation. You know that old saying that says, under promise and over deliver? Well, we do that with all our clients because we know how fast we can get a landing page up, how fast we could just plug in Google ads, how fast things can happen. We tell them, you know, it's going to be four or five days to get you set up and get, and then all of a sudden within 24 hours of getting leads. That is under promising over delivery. Okay. And we were able to reduce human capital probably by half. Okay. We didn't need as many people to run this business. Everything was in one place. Everything was in one area where one person can watch, help us in, uh, implement, 
well, essentially it's me. I'm the one doing it all, doing all the tool stuff now. But uh, yeah, we were able to cut tens of thousands of dollars a month just by moving to go high level. And agency clients, like I said, got a lot faster results. All right. And so the proudest moment, I think, for both of us were by leading by example. It took us too long to move to go high level. But by leading by example, we, to our coaching students, we were able to save hundreds of our students' businesses from falling apart by simply providing them an easy all-in-one solution so they can cut all of their costs and weather the storm. And that is the story of how we got involved with Go High Level and why we're so passionate about it. And so I wanted to share that. I think that's all I have, right? Yeah, day two implementation. I, I love that because, I mean, well, first of all, I didn't, I was not expecting that. So thank you, James, for <laughs> yeah, the full context of your story. And I remember in 2019, 2020, getting on Zoom calls with a ton of uh, agency owners. And it was similar, you know, they're all trying to stop the hemorrhage, you know, they're taking care of families, they're trying to figure out how to make payroll, they're taking loans out, they, you know, they're running on fumes on credit cards while keeping the marriage together. I mean, it's the same story that I think entrepreneurs are used to, but it, it was hitting hard home for all entrepreneurs and especially marketing companies. So as a as a bigger company at the time, we chose to outdevelop everybody intentionally and go down the route of being able to say we're all in one. Because back in the day, I'll be the first one to admit, you know, everything didn't work as well. Two-way texting was great, but if you didn't set it up properly, you're going to have issues left and right because there's too many things. Since those years, we've came a long way of where we are today. I mean, uh, you know, the amount of community behind this thing, you know, there's almost 60 plus thousand marketers now and climbing. And uh, almost 1.4 million small businesses served through then. So every feature stack you can think of for those million small business owners are in the platform. Our, our biggest disadvantage is to be able to say we are all in one and we're the best at all in one. Because most times when you hear all in one, it's like, ah, it's too good to be true. I don't know. What's up with this high level hype? Is it all affiliate gas? You know, like I I get I get the 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 notion of how it's perceived, but you have to talk to practitioners like James and Jason on building, you know, digital businesses out to see the power of it. So, you know, let's go right into day two implementation. I'm, are you going to make me cry if I keep talking about high level stuff <laughs> yeah, and right. the stories yeah. behind it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and to be honest with you, like, you know, Jason, I hadn't, I, I don't even know how many talks about it. And at some point, like you said, it, there was tons of stuff being added. And I remember him and I always saying, like, at some point, it's going to implode at some point. And I think that was part <laughs> of also a hesita hesitation as well. Um, and so ah, you guys, I, yeah, I don't know how, where, where Sean found all these developers and, and but everything <laughs> yeah, works we're, seamlessly. We're, we're, we're almost 900, you know, full time on pace for almost 2000 by the end of the year, I think all to serve all of you. I mean, so it's our, our focus now is to go back to the original features and strengthen them in a whole new way and build a bigger core foundation to go further. But anyways, what are we looking at here? Why does your high level look different than when I would sign up for a trial? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let me, um, let me show this first. Okay. okay. So this should be more closer, right? Yeah. This is what they would see on a brand new trial, I would say. Okay, but, but uh, you... this is my 497 level, so they won't see this. Okay, got it. Okay, I don't have any other accounts. I only have the 497 level accounts. So, <laughs> okay, cool. So <clears throat> real quick, just to kind of give, for those of you who are brand new, give a, like, a, like a 101 real quick off the cuff here. So when you sign up for a trial, this is where you will land, okay? Uh, agency dashboard. And so you have agency, which is you, right? You're the agency. This is your dashboard. Then if you go over to sub accounts, these are your clients. That's what I think a, a very easy thing to explain that helps people understand fast is that this is like your, um, for you, and this is your clients. Simple as that, right? 
And from there is how you can enter into the clients and set up the things that I'm going to be setting up today. Okay. This is again, my dummy account. So there's really nothing for me to log into for you to see. Um, and then we, you guys hear us talk about account snapshots. And so if you have a snapshot, which is essentially, it's a, uh, it's a sub, a sub account that is set up. You can take a snapshot of it and copy it, let's say into a, another snap, uh, sub account. Okay. Then they have like imported snapshots, which is if I, if somebody sent me a link. So for anybody who's going to be getting our snapshots, it would be imported snapshot when you click it and import it into your own account, shared snapshots. Actually, don't, I don't remember what this, I think somebody shares it with you and sends it to you, right? From my understanding, I don't remember. Yeah, I think, I think shared snapshots are shared from or from you. Right. From, right. from another account. And then Go High Level has their own snapshots. Uh, I've never used any of them, but I'm sure they're pretty good. Yeah. Well, they're they're very like they're very bare, Basic. elementary. Yeah, and that's by design, so you can build on yeah. top of it. Yeah, build on top of it, right? Uh, real quick, let's mention the prospecting because we did go through that yesterday. Real quick, um, uh, this was one of the prospecting tools that you can use for the method that we call the double tap, tap method. And again, in the resources, you guys got the scripts for that. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into, into that. We went through it yesterday. Um, the reselling feature is basically you can resell to your clients. If let's say they're going to do Yext listing, uh, listings for the name, address, phone number to get, make sure it all gets matched, uh, you could charge them whatever you want. Go High Level is going to charge you and you just collect the difference. Okay. And you can go through WhatsApp, all this, Word, WordPress, uh, and then IP re resell settings. A lot of these things I don't use. Okay, I use the uh, Yext. I use Now, which is new that I haven't used before, is the conversion AI, con conversation AI. I think I sold maybe one WordPress, I think. And I haven't had to. In the U.S., WhatsApp, we don't, we, we just use text. I guess we could use WhatsApp. I haven't really looked too much into the WhatsApp, but. Yeah, Maybe. WhatsApp is huge for the international market. That's international, that's, yeah. 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 And by the way, we're one of the only or if not one of the few platforms in the world that integrate with WhatsApp. It took us like 4 years to build that relationship with Meta where, you know, we had to literally meet them in person and it was it was a <laughs> long journey to get get them to say yes. Uh, but yeah, it's really big in the international community. Yeah. Then you have our, uh, you have Go High Levels Marketplace, which is just about like count setups, white labeling, zaps, and and your mobile app and stuff like that. I think for most people here, they already know. Then you have your affiliate. So if you're going to resell uh, Go High Level, um, you again, I don't want to go through this, but you easily resell it. Plus, you guys have tons of resources on on a lot of this stuff as well. Yep. Uh, Template library. One thing I didn't know. Do, what level do they get access to this? All levels. All levels. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this is great too. Like these things are awesome. By the way, I've used a few of these, and so this is another free. Well, yeah, free. I mean, you get it, it along yeah. with with uh, with any of the the levels: the ninety seven, the two ninety seven, and the four ninety seven. Okay. Just again, fast and easy implementation. Yes. I'm okay, okay, in. perfect, perfect, perfect. James, so, yeah. just really yeah. quick, I, I'm going to yeah. time in for like 20 seconds. Uh, there, there's some of you that are brand new to this, and you're probably like, your heads might be on the verge of exploding already, right? <laughs> and so you're like, holy mo, what is all this stuff? And so just going to share something just super quick that has always helped, always helped me, has always helped any of our students that always just want to communicate. Is like, look, when you're tackling something that has a bunch of things that it can do. You might be like all over the place. Well, what do I start learning first? The easiest way to learn something, anything, whether it's uh, skills or a software is to literally look at the use case. Okay. So for example, we are going to be setting up reputation management today, right? So in the end, you're going to be shown the steps on how to set up reputation management. You don't have to figure out everything else. You right now, based on our training, is say, hey, I'm selling reputation management to businesses. And so I will need to set up reputation management. You don't need to set up anything else, right? You're going to get all the details and the steps 
to learn and set up the reputation management. You start with the use case versus just saying, okay, I got to figure out, go high level. No, you don't. What do you need to use it for? In this case, we need to use it for reputation management. So just learn those steps so that you can accomplish that one task. And then potentially, right, you need to learn GMB integration. Like, oh, they got a Google, Google business profile that I want to integrate. Okay, then learn just that part versus trying to tackle and learn everything and try to figure it all out. The easiest way is step by step, use case by use case. Okay, I just want you guys to keep that in mind that you do not have to memorize and understand every single little detail. Just focus on the reason why you actually are using it in the first place. And all the rest of the stuff will just come to you through, again, new use cases and you getting more familiar and confident, uh, confident and comfortable. Okay, just want to make sure you guys are following that logic versus saying, oh man, I got to take all notes and figure out all this stuff. Okay. Yeah. And that's a good point. Like I, I, some of you, um, I don't know if you'll be able to, uh, be able to like do this as I'm doing it. Cause you don't have the snapshot. Uh, but I would, what I would do is understand two things. Number one, you're going to get a reputation management checklist. So you'll have all the steps. Okay. Matter of fact, just to make everybody feel like be able to take a, a breath is that every time I set this up, I have to follow the checklist because I will forget something. Okay. I'm not setting these things up every single day. Once you set it up once for the client, it's just, it's just running. And now I'm not setting it up again. Matter of fact, now I just have somebody set these things up for me. Um, and so I have to follow a checklist. Because, you know, anytime you do these things, you're going to forget one little piece here, one little piece there. I'll probably forget something today. I'm, I'm pretty sure I will. But I do have the checklist to make sure. Okay, so I'm in a sub-account. Now, the name of this sub-account is called Review Management because that's just that, that's the name of it for me so I don't get it lost. But for you, it would be ABC Towing. It would be... Uh, Wayne Smiles Dental, right? It would be your client. That would be the name of the account. Does everybody understand that? We want to make sure that everybody understands that. All right, cool. So here's my checklist, okay? So this is my reputation management checklist. Now I have it printed out here. It wouldn't be possible for me to do show you both, but essentially... Can you, zoom in, a, can you zoom in a little bit yeah, more? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Sorry for interrupting. As I finish them, I'll come over here and check them off. Okay. So the, these are all the steps that you need to take to get this thing up and running. Now, there's a few, there's a few things here that, like for example, setting up your domain, like it's going to go way into the to the weeds. Okay, and so I've elected not to kind of go through certain things. But again, if you do jump on a trial, you'll get a walkthrough of all this in my go high level training just so you guys know all right just to kind of give you a little little nudge to to get on get on the trial and start to implement this stuff so you can start making money all right so first thing i did was i created a sub account okay i already had it created and this is the sub account all right so i'm going to check that off then i'm going to import the snapshot at the end of day three it will be called go high level three day workshop snapshot okay and it will deliver into your account or into the sub account you choose what i'm going to be walking through today all of the assets the automations the emails the text messages everything okay just want everybody to understand that all right so we're going to assume that i imported it the first thing that i always harp on and even for everybody out there that understands everything i'm talking about Whenever you import snapshots, if the snapshot creator did not turn off, uh, th this may not be the case anymore, but this was the case at least six months ago. If they did not turn off the automations, when you import the snapshot, they used to go in there on. Okay. Yeah, defaulted on. Yep. They were defaulted on. And if I could tell you the... I don't even know how to explain. Like you can, the, the, you, can, you can say how it is. You hated it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. When I say like somebody imported the snapshot, all the automations were on and somebody imported a thousand person list and they all <laughs> got everything sent to them. 
Yeah, there was like days where you know I would t- like like this cover myself. <laughs> so the first thing you do on all snapshots is you go into the automations and you turn them off. What does that mean? So, and by the way, one thing that I need to understand. Actually, I could probably check. I don't know. I may have renamed this. You guys call it workflows? Uh, no, automations have workflows in it. Back in okay. the day, it used to be triggers and campaigns, right? We've okay. we've migrated from that to workflows. So that's really all it is. Yeah. Okay, automations. All right. Yeah. So here's my review management folder under my workflows. And this is the, let's call it the assets of each of these workflows. Okay. They all going to work together. All right, each one of these, they're they're num- uh, numbered and lettered for a reason. I'll, I will go slow because we have actually a lot of time and the actual setup doesn't take too long. So I want to make sure that I go very, very slow. Okay, so let's read it. Let's, well, first of all, see, they're all in draft. Let's just follow the sheet. They're all in draft. So that means those are off. So I can go here. Another thing that you want to do is make sure if you go to settings, and you go to, uh, oh, down here. Scroll all the way to the bottom. You want to make sure your missed call text back is not checked on. Again, the reason why is because you, you could utilize it in the future. But right now, just in case people, you know, you upload a list and, and somebody's calling for whatever reason, you don't want this to, to trigger off. Okay. So that's what we always tell people to turn that off. So we're going to turn that off. Okay. Now, here's kind of the and Jason, you could jump in at any moment to explain something better than me, okay? <laughs> because oh, you're doing good, doing good. Okay, um, <laughs> building the list. Now, this is the asset from your client. If you guys remember, the quick win strategy is getting a list from the trial client, requesting a list from them. I have my dummy data here, and this is all you really need. Uh, first name, let me just write this in here. Last name, uh, phone and email, okay? So this is what your list, this could be a list. Again, don't, this is all dummy data. This could be a list that your trial client gives you. Well, James, what if they don't have a list? Well, and I've dealt with this in the past. It depends on the niche, but like, for example, my one of my plumbing clients, he doesn't have a list, but he had a big folder. I don't have one here. A big folder of the name, you know, of his of his work. Like his um, when he would go to somebody's house, it was the invoices. He had like a whole white a yellow packet of it. And so I said, okay, give me that, and I will create the list for you. Why would I be willing to do that? Well, because, like I said, a happy client will refer other clients. In the beginning of your business, and by the way, I still do this stuff. I don't do it as much as I used to, but I still do it. Jason Jason still does it. And I can tell you guys right now, we don't need to do it. We still do it to, to stay relevant because it's something that we coach and we teach. We need to be in, you know, in with everybody else, right? Um, and so those are some of the things that I've done. You know, Jason with a gym client, I don't remember how you, he got you the list. I don't know if he already had one, maybe he just emailed it to you, but you know, there's different scenarios of how to get lists. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? And when you say list, you're talking about the customer, customer list from the client. Existing, existing previous customers, e- right? Existing previous customers. And what happens when you meet, you know, someone who's never collected data and they've got, you know, a piece of paper and a chalkboard in the front of the mm-hmm. cash register? Like w- what are your practices when that happens? Yeah, this is, so this is great. This is one of the benefits of, you know, again, we like to lead off of those quick win services. So when we lead off with one of these strategies, like a reputation management or message marketing, if they don't have a list, right, that's the common, well, crap, they don't have a list. How do I, how do I work with them? Oh, well, that's, well, that's what we need to focus on. So the next opportunity actually is to build that list, build that asset for you. And our lead generation services will do that for you. All right, we're going to put together a great offer. We're going to put it out there on Facebook, put it on Google, you know, depending on the niche. 
and essentially you roll into that scenario of just just down down selling if you will your lead generation services which will ultimately help build the asset build that list um and then right we can tack on i've already kind of preloaded it as hey reputation management is important or message marketing is important so they already know that's there and now i use this other you know this other service to come in and say hey well we need to get to this point. This is the service that's going to do it. And, and one just quick note about that, just one little sly, insidious kind of thing of why we do it that way. Why do we leave with these quick win services that are easy to set up versus just kind of going in, pedal to the metal with lead gen? Like a lot, a lot of people like to start off with Facebook ads, Google ads. Well, if you guys, some of you experienced agency folks, you may know this as, you know, Anyone who starts off with lead generation, what is a common thing? It doesn't matter how many follow-ups and, and how many awesome automated systems we put we put together. When we start with lead generation, what typically happens with a lot of our clients, right? They concentrate on lead by lead. Oh, these leads suck, or no, I'm not converting any of these leads, right? We get into, we fall into this little trap. So what we like to do is we like to start with services that essentially kind of already rely on an asset being built, right? And we talk up that asset in terms of, hey, this is your, we like to call it the business ATM, right? An asset list is your business ATM that you can tap into on a consistent monthly basis and pull money out of, right? And reputation management is a way to enhance that. Message marketing or database reactivation is a way to essentially facilitate that. And so we sell them on that idea first, and then, like, oh, well, I don't have a list. Ah, oh, okay. Well, that's the priority then. Obviously, we got to get your business ATM built up. So our lead generation service is going to do that for you. Now, the cool thing is, is we're going to have some people, a small percentage of people will claim your offer right up front. They're going to spend money right away. But the really cool thing is whether they spend money with you now or not, they're all going to end up in that business ATM and we'll get them in the future from one of those other services we already talked about, we'll end up making it a future withdrawal. So what we do is we reset the expectations that if I run lead gen, all these leads aren't gonna turn into customers right away, right? I've reset that expectation to say, look, the money is in your asset, the list, this is just the means to get people onto your list so we can get to those real high ROI, high value um, services. So just a... Yeah, I, lo I, I love that, by the way, Jason, because yesterday you also provided an analogy of you being the physician. And when you look at a business providing the right diagnosis. So in yeah. the scenario that they have the disease of no list, we have a formula, we have a prescription yeah. that makes sense. And I'm right. sure you will get a couple of business owners that think they know their disease and their problems more than the physician. They'll come tell you, hey, run TikTok ads because my competitor did it. This is right. where you have to really put on your expertise hat and guide them. And that guiding is usually education. But I love what you just said, Jason, on having a plan of attack when X, Y, Z scenarios happen. And this scenario will happen that yep. they don't have a exactly. list. That's just a common scenario. Next, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just flow to the next thing. Yeah. Exactly. And 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 just just to even add on to that, and maybe Jason, you'll talk, it's important that maybe spend a minute to talk on this. Again, remember in, yesterday I talked, I said that you guys would have like this kind of epiphany, some of you, when you see that the the pieces kind of fall in uh, together. The client qualification interview, that is what it's for. It's to know Okay, they don't have this, but they need this. That's it's kind of kind of like what like Jason said yesterday. Going to the doctor, let me let me do a full physical on you first. The quali qual uh, client qualification in interview is the physical, and then you know within that conversation what to pivot to if you need to, what to offer because they're literally telling you all the problems in that in that interview, and that's what makes that that powerful. And and your sales pitch becomes like your preliminary report of findings. Correct. Right. Yeah. And so it, it's not a hard sale. It's like, hey, listen, you're bleeding here. Let me help you stitch this up and get you stable at, at into a world of profitability. But but so yeah. So what are we looking at here? We have a list, and then what do we do with it inside high level? Okay. So here's the list that we collected from a client, right? I would say 25 names is good to start, 50 if they have it. It's a, it's a good okay. start. And so it's important to tell you guys the setup of the list because we've had you know problems in the past where people have uploaded a list and the numbers didn't go. So again, 
country code, if it's in the U.S., any of these formats work, okay? If it's outside the U.S., this, this is the format that it needs to be, okay? These are all U.S. numbers. So as you can see here, parentheses will work. Um, country code dash 651, yeah. that will work. And then just straight number will work, okay? This is like, a lot of people struggle with this for some reason. But anyway, so if you have the list in a Google Doc, you, you're going to export it and then export it again into, I already have it, into a CSV that I should have on my desktop, I hope. I could have, well, I'll just do it again. I think I deleted it because I had like 400 images on my thing. So you can go File, uh, Export, hold on. Download CSV. We're going to open it. I have numbers. So the way I do things is probably not what everybody has to do. Either way, you just need to get it into a CSV file. Okay. And so we'll save that. All right. Now we're in here. We're going to, according to our sheet, we built the list and now we're going to import the list. Okay. So where do we import it? We go over to contacts. Now, does everybody, before I do this, does everybody know why I'm doing this? Does anybody know, or if you don't know, ask the question of like why like I'm doing, I'm doing this to get my clients, past customers into go high level. So then I can deploy the rep management campaign. We'll just explain it like give that. Us, okay. Give us a yes in the chat if you're following so far. Give us a no in the chat if you want us to clarify, but instead of just saying no, tell tell us what, what you're <laughs> stuck on. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, just a, again, it's the refresher. And for some of these that didn't that miss it, we sell this in two parts, right? We start off with a trial, which we want a quick win, right? Quick win isn't going out and waiting for new customers to come in. We want to tap into that business's existing customer list. Most businesses will have some sort of list database of customers that have already done business with them. So for our trial, our quick win, we want to just tap into that, right? We don't. We want to go ahead and just grab that list of people, put them into our workflow and start getting reviews right away. When we get to the ongoing service, that's where we can take our time because now we're on retainer. And 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 we're we're working on getting reviews from the new customers that are ongoing coming in after that existing customer list. So the trial, which is what James is showing you, is like, hey, we already got the list of existing customers. Let's get that quick win, show those results, make the client happy, and then they say, yeah, I want to keep getting this service. Then they'll pay us and go to the ongoing service, which is what James will show next. Yeah. Yep. I, I love this. One thing to remember is that certain industries have higher retention marketing chances. Like a realtor, for example, they deal with customers where they buy a house once every seven, 10 years, right? And it, especially if they're working in residential areas versus like a gym owner, they're trying to bring people back in every single month. So certain industries have its own advantages and they have subscriptions. So pay attention to those things because just because they have a list doesn't mean it's going to convert because their business model is not, you know, positive for retention. Just FYI. Remember yeah. that. Go ahead, James. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to import it. So I'm going to, I'm in my contacts. I'm going to go to import contacts and I'm going to upload the file. All right. So let me upload the file. Okay. Now you're going to now hit next and you're going to map it. Mapping essentially means um, first name equals, and then it gives an example. Last name equals gives an example. Phone gives an example. Email gives an example. And then in Go High Level, it's matching it to these values. Okay. First name, last fields, name, right? phone. Those What's are that? Custom fields, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are custom fields, right? Not values. Unless I'm, I'm sorry, uh, they're, they're custom fields. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. Cool. Yeah. No, the values we'll get into in a little bit. Okay. Perfect. All right. Everybody get that? Yep. Give us a yes in the chat if you're following so far. Okay. Perfect. Let's see a few uh, yeses. Where are these fields coming from? I'm going to cancel this. One second. Ah. 
I got to delete this. These were my notes. <laughs> I got to delete these things. Hopefully this is helpful, y'all. We we typically don't do a click by click kind of a scenario, but I want you all to slow down a little bit. I mean, high level could be pretty overwhelming with the five, 600 features we have. So sometimes it's better to slow down and build an offer that makes sense for a local market. And just like we are on live, Jason, yeah. do you guys have team members internally that are just high level certified or high level, like they're just seasoned. So they just handle that. Or do you as business owners run this yourself? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, you know, James handles literally majority of this and, you know, anyone that we typically bring on our team are typically people that are come up through our coaching program that we kind of taught to begin with. And, and, and they, you know, have, have either um, supplemented developing their skills by getting in there, playing around or, uh, or they just purely, you know, kind of get on the job training from James, but uh, pretty yeah. cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Now like a big thing of bringing coach, like ascending students to coaches is knowing go high level so they can just support a lot, a lot more of it. Okay. So again, so this is actually good that it happened. When you create these these CSVs uh, files, you just want to make sure that you only have the columns that you need. Okay, so uh, name Ebony Scott, name last name Huffman Benson, last name. Now I forgot to rename the field, but it's fine because this is what mapping is for. Okay, uh, phone, phone, email, email. All right, and so I'm using these examples to make sure that, you know, it's sh not showing me a phone number in the email field. All right. And with God's grace, this will import correctly. And, <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to name this, um, uh, client past, let's just name it past list number one. So then I know what it is. By the way, high level is usually a little slower on browser, especially if you're doing live streaming or Zoom. So the system is actually a whole lot faster than what you might be even seeing. James Navigate here, just FYI. Yeah. So, and so now I uh, upload the list and I realize, oh, okay, some of the numbers didn't come through. Okay. And this happens. And so if I look at Rachel, Rachel Peterson, uh, for some reason it just didn't go through. So sometimes this will happen. Um, and sometimes it lags as well. And so numbers will show up in, in five, 10 minutes. And so I would wait 15, 20 minutes after uploading the list before you ever deploy this. Okay. Because sometimes it will do that. It'll kind of lag a little bit. And it may be because I'm also on Zoom also it depends well. on the size of the list. If you're uploading like a 10,000 member list, I would I would just work on it a few hours later, and I'm yeah you know, yeah, but yeah definitely. But. Okay, so I I've uploaded my list of twenty five people, uh, phone number, uh, and email. Okay, so I'm gonna click. In, I imported my list. Now, we're gonna start connecting. Okay, we need to have our Google our clients Google business profile connected. And this, you don't necessarily need the Facebook page, but in the example, I'm going to uh, use also have the Facebook page. Okay. So where do we go for that? We're just going to go to settings. And we're going to go to integ inter integrations. And I've already connected it, but you'll see the ability to hit sign in. And all that's going to do is it's going to bring you to, uh, to sign in to your client's uh, Google business profile, which is their Gmail account, essentially. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to tackle this now, right? Cause I'm going to be like Eminem in eight mile where he always, you know, <laughs> what, what was the big thing that he did? He made fun of himself first before they could make fun of him. And the person had nothing to say. Okay. So that's what I'll do during this training as well. Um, what if the client won't let you do it? Well, you simply, could say, okay, would you feel comfortable if you did it, all right? And you would, all you would do is add them as a staff member. Okay, you can go down here to staff. If I could find it. There we go. It's, a cut, it's cutting off for some reason. Where's my staff? 
there we go and then you would simply just add add the person as a user and let them connect it okay you could get on a zoom you can walk them through it i've never had problems with them letting i mean this is a this is somebody who agreed to let you run their marketing they should allow you to do it okay this is checking for uh comments all right so let's go back to uh here we're going to connect our google business profile i have already done it go back to settings integrations so this is where i've connected it okay and th this is important because you're going to need it to do this then over here i have connected let me slide this over here because it's in my way there we go and and by the way just real quick before you go to the next step i'm seeing some of the comments you have the ability to provide different levels of access to your clients like your client you don't if you feel like one, uh, you, one of your clients is very techy you can give them admin access and there's user admin access for their sub account for their location um obviously don't give admin access to your parent account your agency account so then they see all your clients and all the you know movements but um, you can choose different levels and you can turn off so many features and go down to bare bone of like one or two features if you want uh, but just remember, you have the ability to limit or expand your client's capability inside each location or platform based on user um, um, privilege. Trust. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, yes, so you could do that as well. Um, and so here I've connected a, a, just any Facebook page, okay, for um, sample reasons. Okay, so I go back here. I've connected Google. I've connected Facebook. Now, let's go into our automations and let's start editing the content, okay? You're, you're getting a snapshot, but that is a snapshot with, with emails and text messages for, a, for you know, one of my clients, let's say, okay? We tried, to, we tried to make the snapshot as broad as possible. And so either way, you need to edit. So I'm going to go to automations. Stop me if I go too fast. No, you're good. You're right. good. Okay. So this is the campaign we're working in. This is past, see how it says past customers? Quick win, okay? So I'm going to click in there. And what triggers, so every workflow has a start, okay? The start is called a trigger. And that start is what's going to put P, uh, the contacts into this workflow, Something needs to start it. And so in this case, we're starting it with something called the reactivation review. Okay, it makes sense, right? We're reactivating past clients and we're asking them for a review. So we tag it, reactivation review. Yeah. Can you then they're can gonna get zoom, can you zoom on the bottom oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. corner a little bit? Yeah. Triggers are basically okay. yeah. Triggers are basically if then conditions and you can create yep. your own triggers based on conditions. So even if let's say, for example, somebody watched a course for 10 minutes, you can say anybody that watched the course for 10 minutes, create this action. So triggers are basically trigger points or start buttons essentially to enter people into an automation tree like this. Go ahead, James. Yep. And so the first thing is we're going to go into the first uh, SMS. Okay. And this is called, uh, the action name is the customer thank you draw. Now I'll get into that in just a second of why it's called that. All right. And we'll get into what we're doing to get people to move on, on putting a re review in for the client. So it says, Hey, this is, and then I'm going to have a custom value of owner first name with the company name. We're doing a client thank you gift draw of. Again, whatever the prize is going to be. And we'll set this up. I will explain why we're doing it this way. It only takes five seconds to leave a review on Google to be entered to win. And then there's a trigger link. And I will talk about trigger links. Okay. I want to get through the editing content first. Okay. Now, you can edit this content however you want. Whatever you want to say. It doesn't matter as long as if you choose to use custom values... We will start, we will fill them in. We use custom values so we can, instead of going into the workflows all the time, we just make the changes in the area of the custom values. Okay. And then I, I will go in there. I will show you exactly what that means. Email. Uh, and then they're also going to get an email. 
basically saying the same type of thing. Hey, contact first name. Okay, remember we uploaded them with names, first and last name. Now, a lot of times people have uploaded first and last name together, which would be full name. I always separate them so I could be personal on the emails. So this would be first name. We're doing a customer thank you draw. Okay. It could say it could be prize. It could be contest, whatever you guys want to call it. It only takes five seconds to leave a review on Google. And this link here is a trigger link right here. See where it says trigger underscore link. There's reasons why we have to use trigger links here. And I will get to it in just a second. And then we just basically say uh, custom values, owner, first name and client company. This is your client. This is the client that you're putting here. Now, some of you may decide to say, I don't want to use custom values. You don't need to just replace it with the information of this client in this sub account. Okay. And so, so on and so forth. I don't think I need to go into each one. It goes to three and then we get them out of there. We don't want to piss anybody off. Okay. We don't want to continue to ask them for reviews over and over and over again. And then your client comes to you and says, hey, why do you keep sending emails and text messages to my clients over and over and over again? So we only do it three touches. That's it. That's all we're going to do. And <clears throat> that's how this workflow works. Okay. So if I go over here, I'm going to say I edited content within the work, within the automations. So let's talk about trigger links. Okay. Let's go over into go high level. And we're going to go to marketing and we're going to go to trigger links. Okay. So we have three of them that we utilize in this snapshot. Reactivation review link, review request link, and then the Google review link. The reason why we use trigger links is a trigger link does what it says. It's going to trigger something to happen. They click the link any of these links in the automation and they immediately get removed from the automation. That's what's going to remove them because if they don't get re removed, then they let, let's say they get a text message, they leave a review, then tomorrow they get another one. And then the next day they get another one. It wouldn't make any sense, right? Does that make sense? I'm going to stop here and just make sure that this all, what I've said so far makes sense. Yeah. Say that one more time. So the trigger link will remove them from the previous workflows. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's going to remove them. That's in this automation. I'm going to show you now. I should have said it after I showed this. So if you take a look at this, our start of this automation is trigger link clicked, and then we share them the trigger link, and it's the review request link. Okay? And or I should say, and or reactivation review trigger link clicked. And then basically these are the three I just showed you reactivation review link. Okay. When, when they click it in the automation one, this is why I have C one here, a campaign one on this side, then they're going to go down this path and be, and get a tag that says review link clicked. And then it's going to remove them. If they're in auto, uh, C one automation, they get removed. If they're in the C2 automation, they get re removed. That's what this workflow is doing. It's removing them from the automations because they already clicked the link with the review link. So so what's the difference between all three of these scenarios? Okay. Like what's the use scenario? When do you use, when do you deploy one versus the other? Or is it all connected together? What am I what am I missing? It's, so I so the I have this set as C1, which was campaign one, right? Yep. Then C2, which is campaign two. C1 is past customers reactivation review. Okay. So you're reactivating so they, old customers back into the business. Yep. Activating old customers to leave reviews. Yep. So they would be in, in uh, campaign one. They won't be in this one because these are new customers. Right. Got it. Okay. So if somebody goes through campaign one and clicks a review link, they end up here and then we'll just be removed and now they're out they're done they're finished yep never to, re never to return again yep i'm following okay i will touch on this one and after i go through the the uh, what it looks like okay all right let me just is there any other questions coming in that i can answer 
there are a few questions. We'll address it after. Let's keep okay. flowing. All right. Let's let's keep flowing. So we, we check the trigger links. And by the way, if if you get the snapshot, this is all there. It's a heck of a lot easier to go through the checklist and then test it. And it's like, oh, it works. Okay. okay. Check the form. And here's my warning. You don't have to understand the scripts that are on this form. Okay. So let's go and look at the form. Marketing. I'm sorry. Sites. You notice here, there's no funnels, no websites. This is one service that we're offering. And we'll go over to the form builder. And for anybody that's new, again, go. remember I showed you that big sheet, go high level, has forms, surveys, funnels, websites. They have everything. This is why we're able to do all this stuff, okay, without having to connect anything together. This form is called Reputation Review Form Stars and Gate Form, okay? So I'm going to click that. All right, so this is what the form looks like. There's scripts added to this form. So I, I've had people ask me like, oh, how do I get the stars or edit the stars? And this is the first time. And, and my next question is, is like, how many clients do you have? Oh, I, I don't have any. I haven't even started. So what are you worrying about the stars for? Right. And, and I hope I make a very big point here. We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're using things that work. So my advice to everybody is just use it. Use it the way it's intended. There's still little things you can edit and stuff like that. But if you're not a coder, you don't know how to do this stuff. Leave it as, as it is, as is. Okay. So if I, this is already set up. There's nothing I even need to do here. If I just hit preview. This is what this simple yet powerful form does. How well did we do it? Now I can edit this kind of stuff, right? I can edit the easy stuff over here. You know, I could change this as you see fit. If you just hit edit HTML, you could just, how well did we do? Did we do a good job? Whatever you guys, you can edit it right there. Okay, it's easy. We found that the less we said, the more responses we got. We we actually had to edit this piece here, five stars being the best, because some people didn't realize that it was like, they were putting one star, like, I don't know how anybody could get confused about that, but whatever, five stars being the best. And so that's part one of the form. Now, part two of the form pops up, okay, depending on the stars. Now, I will address, because I'm again, I'm going to be Eminem here. I'm going to address uh, the, the elephant in the room, but I'm going to address it after I'm done talking about all this. If they leave a one, two, or three star, they're going to be asked to give feedback. This is an internal form. It, uh, I hate that I can't go back. Oops. Anyway, this is an internal form that we're, we are asking them uh, for feedback because, because they left us a bad review. Okay. Hold on. Let me go. Let me open a couple uh, of these so I can show examples. Okay. If they leave a four star, it's going to ask them to leave a review on Google. Okay. That's just how the form works. Now, for those of you who might be worried, okay, I'm I'm going to tell you that I've never worried about this because to me, I'm asking for an internal review and I'm collecting feedback of my own customers. And all I'm doing is giving them a link to, if it's a good review or they gave me four stars to go leave it on Google, they could do the same thing if they leave you a one star. It doesn't stop them. But if we, we've had students that it's fine, that they're like, hey, all I did to calm myself down was, was put a link down here as well to say, hey, you could still leave a review, but let us, you know, basically fill this out and let us fix the problem. But here's a little tiny link that you can go and click and go to Google and leave us a review. Okay. I've had people do that. So that's the elephant in the room. If anybody wants to ask about that, I think I answered it. Yeah, and the and what you mean by the elephant in the room is like the whole thing about review gating or regulations or TOS or the different ways to you know like uh, manage it. And there's multiple practices, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. the The biggest thing that uh, they're more concerned about is giving an offer that says, "Go leave me a good review, and I'll give you a hundred dollars." Yeah, see, that's yeah. that's the, that policy in Google is the nut like that is what they watch out for. Everything else, I mean, we've never run this that hundreds and hundreds of students never had a problem. But if it makes you feel better, 
I'm giving you the solution to it. You just have to put down here. And then that is no matter that is basically saying no matter what they're telling me internally, I'm still giving them the same access to go leave a review. Okay. Not that they don't have the access to just go and leave a review on it. Well, yeah, right. Or whatever, right? Like you're not yeah. you're you're not limiting it either, regardless. I don't even know how I would I don't even know how people do. <laughs> I don't know if people actually do that. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't I don't even know how that would be possible. <laughs> but whatever. Um so that's how the form works. Okay. Does everybody understand how the form works? Yeah. Yeah. So basically principle here is create an internal review feedback system. One through three gives you the ability to get the feedback and then really feel the problem or give yourself really, you know, um, it's good for economics, right? You know what, what you need to fix for your business at the end of the day. And then four and yes. five, you know, it skyrockets them to just go right into a platform and provide oh, good feedback, feedback. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now quick question for Jason. I'm assuming Jason, you handle a lot of the sales stuff. Uh, maybe James, you do as well, but what is the positioning of this pre sale? Like what, what are you telling the prospects that you're going to do before they say yes to this? Or is this only presented after they're onboarded like this campaign model? Oh, you know, it, it, it potentially is just a kind of an overview, like, um, I can't remember if it was in, in our group yesterday on a Q&A or if it was on this discussion yesterday. Um, when you talk to a client, when you talk to a prospect, you typically want to talk in as little detail as possible. You want to talk at like the third to fifth grade level, like you would in copywriting. So we tend to not to get into the, oh, first we're going to do this and this and this and this. So we would give like a nice general overview. Say, yeah, we have a campaign that will incentivize, um, uh, essentially get people to take action and our goal is to get more positive review. You know, we'll explain what's going to happen, but we don't get into every single detail of the campaign, if that makes sense. Got it. Got it. So then it's it's not a technical jargon during the sales conversation because you're trying to... Right. Just and go... you never want to do that, honestly. I mean, okay. and, and I'm sure you, I know you guys and your, your masterminds yeah. and stuff talk about that kind of stuff when you're selling, yeah. even with something as a SaaS, you want to you keep it at the most superficial level that you can um, so that they understand the concepts uh, which is why analogies are great. Analogies are important to use. Um, it helps you stay out of the weeds. As soon as you get a prospect that is so in the weeds that you're talking about, you know, like, oh, okay, we're going to set up this one workflow and it's going to, you know, trigger link. If you're in the, those kind of weeds, <laughs> um, you're dealing you're with a potential headache. Yeah. You're dealing with someone who is going to, is they're, they're either fishing trying to figure out, mm, let me just pull out all the information and I'll do all this, or they're just going to be in your chili nonstop. And to me, that's a huge red flag. So. Cool. Cool. So uh, James, let's go, let's, let's go faster. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm just looking so, at the time. We got, we got so much to cover. Yeah. All right. I will go a little faster. All right, cool. So I checked the form. I understood how it works. And now I'm going to start adding information for the custom fields. So uh, custom values. I made this thing a little too big. Okay. Go to settings. I'll make it bigger again. Uh, we're going to go to custom values. And I've already pre-filled this out because I didn't want to waste time doing it. And so here's our custom values. We have client company. Okay. So we'll say elite fitness. Client full name. Joe's like, no, I, I, I don't need to read through this. Now, this is important. The contest price. So like Jason said, all we're, we're what we're doing is is we're saying hey we're we're basically giving a customer appreciation giveaway all we're asking you to do is go leave a review for us not a good review not a bad review just leave a review this is kind of what gets people to to move right it gets people to do something yes you can ask them out, out of the kindness of your heart and yes maybe people will do it but more people will want to win a $50 gift card a $100 target card you know we have um a student that is very big with restaurants runs this exact campaign for dozens of restaurants. And some of the, sometimes he's giving away a hundred dollars a week, right? Again, for the elephant in the room, for those of you who like to get, you know, get in the weeds on this stuff, this would be a problem. If you're giving a gift card for every person who leaves a review, this is a contest. You're essentially going to just randomly pick somebody and then let them know that they won. Okay. Just want to, Make sure I tackle that. M&M. &M. All right. Location name. 
This is your company, okay? Um, review Facebook URL. Now, you don't have to put this if you don't want them to leave reviews. So, so most people want Google reviews. The reason why we do this, okay, is because on a random chance, sometimes people don't have Gmail, right? And the way it works, and they're logged into Facebook, they're not logged into their Gmail, and this, the, the form, the way the form will work is if they're logged into Facebook, it will automatically populate the Facebook um, review link that you put here, Facebook reviews. Okay, so if you're if they're logged in to Facebook, they're not in Gmail, it will offer them to leave a review on Facebook. All right. But I can change that by saying, hey, I want my location. The main location for a review is Google. And then you just provide in these custom values your uh, search Google dot com review. Oh, um, I have to back up on one thing. Here's my two uh, Google reviews. Now, where did I get those reviews, The uh, these review links? I have to go into, yeah, matter of fact, I need to add this to the checklist. Good thing. I'm going to say get uh, URL. Oh, I think I have that on the checklist already. Uh, I think I have that. Name of client company, Google or Facebook. That's what the fallback location is, was basically saying my main review location, I want to be either Google or Facebook. Most people will say Google. And then uh, connecting. So here's where that Google review URL comes. It comes from your connection in Go High Level. So I'm going to go back here under integrations. Remember, we connected uh, the Google business profile in the Facebook page. Well, if we go into reputation management tab, which Guaha Level does an amazing job at because it's like everything in one place. This is you. This link here, since I connected it, it provided me this link. This is the review link. And then I simply just put it into a custom link here. Okay. Uh, you could use this one. I actually, th this was a change that you guys made at some point in the last maybe 60 days where you used to just like generate it, but now you don't even have to generate it anymore. It's just the same one that's here, okay? So you could use this one or this one. And so all I did was take this uh, custom review link and went back into my custom values and just pasted it, okay? And the reason why you have these custom values built out early on is because when you build out campaigns or wherever assets, digital assets are created, you don't need to type in all these things every single that's time. Exactly that's exactly right. That's really, okay, cool. Yeah. And so, right. And, and to add on to that, imagine, you know, we've had, we've had people who, um, we had one guy, I can't remember his name. This is all he provided. He had like 77 clients on rep management and all he did was duplicate it, copy it into a sub account and change the values and hit run. Did the same thing over and over. And that's at speed. I mean, that's just how he was able to do it. If he had to go to every single email, every single text message and change the company name and change the uh, the, the person's name and the gift card and the, you know, the all of these URLs, it would be a disaster. So that's why we're doing it in the custom values. Cool. All right. Okay, cool. So everybody knows where I got the review um, URLs from. Here's this one. This is from the connection. This is my Google one. It's my review fallback in my Google because I want the main review to be Google. The, uh, I want to send everybody to Google to leave a review. Now I have my review reactivation form link. Now, the way you, where you get these forms, these form links, are you just go to forms. Okay. And I, and we we actually dumbed this down a lot. There was a lot more stuff in the, in this snapshot, and we realized that everybody was just using one. So why have all this other stuff? So we dumb this down a lot, which works better. And we click integrate, okay? And we're just going to copy form link right here, all right? And then we, we just go back into our settings, our custom values, okay? Our review reactivation form link, we're just going to paste it here. By the way, the way you do that, you just hit edit. Just I didn't know if anybody knew that. 
You just paste it. And that'll update. And then the review request form link, you're going to use the same form. We're literally using the same form for both. Again, re remember, reactivation review, past customers. Review request is new customers you're requesting their review. Okay? And let me just get through this, and then I'll see if there's... And then user first name is just whatever you want it to be, whoever the, the owner of the company is. All right. So that would take care of all my custom values. Uh, anyway, they're all checked. So now, phone number. So there's there's two things to talk about here, which is a very important, another elephant we could talk about. But James, how am I going to do this if I just added the sub account, they're a new client, and they aren't A2P registered? Well, the secret to that is you just get rid of the SMSs if... So you have two choices. Number one, do the proper things and get them registered. It's a lot faster now than it was even three months ago. What do you need for that? There's training everywhere. Uh, I also have the training in my goal high level training if you get a trial um, on the A2P registration. What we are now saying is if your client doesn't want to wait, if you want to get this going, just do it via email. That's it. Just for, forget the forget the phone number. Get rid of the... Get rid of the text messages and add two more emails, let's say, right? Because emails are a lot less annoying to people than text messages. So I would say just add a few more emails to the automation. Again, we'll go back to this because it works just as good. And now with all, you know, again, even before the force of A2, A2P registration, we still found a lot of people we're getting um, more responses on email because a lot of phones now, when they didn't recognize the phone number, they were going into the filtered uh, boxes and all that stuff. They weren't even seeing it anyway. So we would simply just go in here and say, okay, all my SMSs, I'm just going to go and delete, delete, delete. And you know what? I'll add two more emails. You know, we'll do it after the first day, maybe two days, maybe three uh, after three days, and then maybe the last one, five days. Okay, so that's the solution to that. There's always solutions to everything because I know I'm going to get that. People are going to ask about that. <laughs> yep. All right, and so that is... That's the first option, right? Yeah, so like, let's say I say phone number, no. And then I tell you, delete the SMS. Email, yes. So we, we already went through it. We, we, uh, we set up the emails. Now we're going to turn on the automations. Okay, so we're just going to turn this one on. And remember, look, this is how I labeled them. C1, and I'm telling you that you have to have C1 turned on. Anything that has a C1 turned on needs to be on, okay? That's how you know. I'm not running a, a campaign too. I'm not doing this for new customers. I'm only doing this for reactivation. So I need only the first, the second, and the third. Oh, I didn't go through this, so I'm going to go through this now. So remember I talked about the stars? Okay, we have the stars here. If I do one, two, or three stars, <clears throat> that's what's going to trigger the automation for the negative feedback, right? One, two, or three would be negative. All right, I'm going to remove them from the first campaign or the second campaign. L let me repeat this. I'm starting this automation if they submitted a three-star, a two-star, or a one-star. Then I'm removing them from the other campaigns. I'm adding a tag that they gave me negative feedback. I'm letting the 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 my client know, like, hey, this name just provided negative feedback on their experience. Here's the stars that they gave you. Here's what they said. You should reach out to them as soon as possible, okay? So again, it's almost like another service as well. And then you're simply just emailing the person who left the bad review saying, you know, thank you so much. Our management team is reviewing our feedbacks. So we can ensure that anyway, you get the point, right? Go to chat GBT if you want to change it. And then we're just simply removing them. That's it. I mean, that's how of kind of, I got yeah, a couple yeah, of questions ahead. for you on that. Why did you use a tag feature? Tag feature in terms of, like, why did you add a tag in all the negative audience? feedbacks? All your automations, I noticed you added a tag. And I know it's because you want to segment your audience, a smart list and things like that. But can yeah. you provide some context to why that's important? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's, that would be the next thing to explain. How am I going to get this person in here? Okay. Because remember, I uploaded the list, but nobody went in. Okay. So now I'm going to simply reactivation review. Matter of fact, that is, I'm going to add that to the checklist that you guys all get is adding the tag. Now, the reason why I don't have that. It's probably just habit, right? You add a tag every time. Well, because you could do it multiple ways, right? And you know this. In my contacts, if I want to push all these people into the campaign, I can simply highlight them all, select all 24, and add to campaign with this one button. And that's what I typically do. Um, and I hit OK, proceed. And I just choose campaign one, customer draw, past customers, and then I can add them, right? Another way to do it would be to do exactly what that campaign is triggering, which would be the reactivation review. And so I would simply go add tag, and I would choose the reactivation review tag, and then add them to the automation. Okay, now, the reason why we continue to uh, tag them based on um, a negative feedback is because, you know, you, you would want to know that, right? We would segment them. Maybe, you know, your client in the next next month wants to take his 10 bad reviews and give them something. Maybe, you know, hey, here's a $25 uh, off coupon to your ne next dental cleaning or something. And then what does that do? That moves us, and Jason will probably talk on this, moves us into another service, which we had listed, of message marketing. So everything is starting to build together. Hey client, you got, you know, 25 new reviews, but you know, you had like 12 people that said they weren't happy with a service. Do you want to add it, you know, do you want to go through some like uh want to offer them something? We could do that for you, right? Give them a $20 coupon, whatever it might be. And so this all these services kind of build upon each other. Jason, you want to add any notes to that? No, I mean, he hit, it, he hit it spot on. And, you know, th that was the whole, you know, that, that again, if you didn't watch yesterday, another just important moment to just mention, you know, go back and check out yesterday because it literally gives you the whole strategy and that whole baby Yoda strategy that we talked about. Like once I know my services, once I know what it is I offer, right, I'm, I'm kind of unstoppable at this point, right? I know what I offer businesses and how they all play together. Like you're unstoppable. There's not one scenario where you can't offer something, right? I, if, if they have a list, cool, I can go into reputation management. And then as James says, you know, I got people that left reviews, maybe people that didn't leave reviews, maybe people that uh, had bad review experiences. We can segment them out, do message marketing campaigns to them um, with, with some sort of offer, have different offers to all, to, to all those different people or have them all on one big list and say, hey, we have this monthly special going on. So I have my message marketing campaigns. If they don't have a list to begin with, cool. I just flow right into my lead generation service, which helps build that list. Also helps put some sales revenue uh, into the client's pocket, which then now leads me to saying, all right, cool. Now we have this asset. Let's start tapping into this business ATM. Our message marketing service is perfect for that. Cool. Boom. We got some new customers. Hey, next thing, let's go ahead and get our rep management service going and start getting some reviews out of these people that are having great experiences with your business so that we can then leverage that to bring in even more customers, right? You just start piling on top of each other once you kind of understand. And it's really just a handful of things, right? You just have a handful of things. Um, and it's just a matter of knowing when to pull them out um, uh, or what times to pull those out. And so it's just, it's all a holistic strategy. And this is kind of one of the things that also we like to say will separate you from everyone else out there, right? You have a lot of people out there that just like to offer Facebook ads and that's it, right? That's their one hammer, right? It doesn't matter what the the the, the problem is, Facebook ads is all they're going to offer. That's it. Well, no, Facebook ads is the solution to your problem. When you come into it as the business doctor and you hear that, you know, you kind of get the symptoms, then you can provide a proper diagnosis amongst many solutions. And when they all start working together, again, that's where you really enhance the value that you're providing a business and keeps them sticky and keeps them paying you forever. I'm not in it for a quick 30 day lead campaign and be done because they didn't like the lead. I want them to, it's easy to fire. You don't want to be that guy, right? You don't want to be the Facebook ads guy. I want to be Jason, right? The difference is the guy who just does the Facebook ads, right? When a Jason comes on, when you come on and say, hey, 
here's what we should start with. Here's the strategy. Oh, okay. Well, I have a guy that's doing Facebook ads too. Oh yeah. Well, we can do that too, but that, that fits into the strategy. Like, oh, will you do that too? I'd rather just have you do everything. Let me just get rid of that guy and bring you in. Who's a real asset to my business that has this holistic strategy that's going to help me grow and hit my goals. Right. And so that's, that's where you want to be. This is what separates you from everyone else. Yep. I love that. So what's next, James? Okay. So the next thing would be to add now the, our, uh, let's go back to the checklist. Our automations are all on. Uh, we went through and, and did, did everything that we needed to do. And so I always say test, right? You want to test with yourself first. I've already uploaded the list, but I can still add myself. I don't know how it's going to, yeah, I think I could add myself to this. Well, this is test data anyway. Let's just pretend this is me. Um, yeah. So Regal is me. So if I simply click myself, I'll add, add a tag since that's what it will trigger it. And by adding the reactivation review tag, it's going to. You're basically add, assigning that contact to that tag and all the activities behind that tag. Yep. And so once this gets tagged, it'll push fake me into that automation. Okay. And now how can we know it's in the automation? Like, how do we see it? Like, how do I you know? Go to yep. We go to automations okay. and you'll see here active enrolled. Yeah. You know, okay. I've, I've used this account for other test things. So you're looking at the active uh, enrolled. You could even go into it and go even step further. You'll see where you are on here. So I've already gotten a text. I've already gotten an email and then you can go to enrollment history. Uh, I'm on the waiting period. Yeah. Perfect. Another thing too, for go high level users now, I don't know, you know, a lot of people don't know this. You can now, what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to push myself past the next steps. So then I can kind of see everything, right? And experience what somebody will go through when they, when they go through all the steps. Yeah. And so I'll, you know, again, let's assume I pushed myself all the way through. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's going to, I can't tell you how many, mistakes i find with just like even wording and like or a trigger link you know i i accidentally had a space at the end of you know i was copying and pasting and you find that and then you're just going to go um into your conversations i like to look in conversations and you'll see i i, I don't have a phone number connected here but uh you'll see hey this is joseph agnello with elite fit fitness remember custom value custom value we're doing a client thank you a gift draw of custom value. It only takes five seconds to leave a review on Google and be entered to win. Here's my trigger link. And if I click my trigger link, come to the form, form. I leave yeah. form. I click, I click to leave it on Google and yeah. it pops up and that's how I leave a review. Beautiful. Can you go back Fast to, can you go back to the automation tree real quick? Um, yep. And, um, can you help us understand the data tracking behind it? So on the top left corner, there's a little button called stats view. Do you ever use that? Especially the advanced guys? Um, do I not see it on here? So no, go back to the automation tree. Go go into the workflow. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go into the yes. workflow. Top left corner stats view. So those of you that are big into data, this is something that's pretty new and... Tells say, you remember which, that. Yeah. Yeah. Which step is good, right? Like let's say step three for some reason just destroys your whole workflow and nobody's going past it. That's when you know you can look at the copy. You can look at the experience you're providing and rebuild. It'll tell you what's bound like you see this one is bouncing because we know it's fake names, right? But yep. the system will tell you just by triggering that on. So you can replace a ton of tools even just for tracking on delivery, just just from that toggle alone inside the workflows. But I don't know if you guys use this much, but this has been a pretty popular feature inside workflows now. Yeah, you just yeah, have to we... click on each step and and like look at each step individually of this. So this is a huge time. I, I, I didn't even know. I never noticed this. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the first I've seen it. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So imagine, so just for context, those of you that are watching, 
I, I cannot tell you how many marketers and agency owners and professionals I've met that have massive workflows that are 52 weeks long. They have a newsletter for every month. They've got a three-year automations for Black Friday. So when you look at these big, massive things, data is what drives your actual movement, not just your copywriting skills. You, you need to look at what are the numbers, what makes sense, what are the offers. So take a look at a lot of our analytics, um, data analytics. We replace stuff like Hiro's, Google Analytics. And then even in the workflows, there is step-by-step -step numbers that gives you some preliminary ideas of what numbers look like in just the style of how you built something out. But that's something that is um, pretty new and pretty popular. And uh, I believe you could even see it on um, mobile as well. Um, James, can you uh, share a few notes on building content in the workflows like you did versus the email builder? Uh, what do you mean? Like, um... so, like, so in here you can create an email, right? Or you yes, can pull okay. a you can pull one that's from the email builder that's more fancier. Like why do you you know what what is the use case scenario difference for that for you? So I'm gonna tell you the use case in ter so this is all right, let me click this, right? Yeah. Actually, let me go to an email. It's totally fine this if you is, don't have a sample. Well, so this is this is how I just have it set up, right? And this goes into all, like, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of emails that I've set, set up in Go High Level. I never used the template, which would be here, okay? And I'll, and I'll go through that. But now I all, that's all I use is templates. Everything, I'm converting, like, all my follow-ups into templates. And the reason why um, is if I go, let's go to marketing, emails, templates. Let me see if I, let me see if I can... Let's just create a fake one just so you can pull okay. it. Yeah, yeah. No, there might be one here though. Hold on. I might have one already open. Okay. And by the way, all this is in the snapshot. <laughs> Someone's asking, what about showing us a snapshot? We we're going through all parts of the snapshot, just FYI. Um so it's already pre built for you. All you have to do is come in and edit, make it relevant for your business and end users that you're serving. Okay, so this is an example of one. Um byte template survey. And so this would be, you would create it here, right? We would create this, this uh, email template. And then we would go into, I don't want to do it on this account. Let me just slide this over. And then we would, uh, I'll create one because I know you want me to show how to connect it. Uh, here, design editor. We can start from scratch. There are designs in here, right? Um, or is sure. that from the campaign? It could be. Could be from the campaign. Anyway, but, this but is yeah. a test. Yeah. And there's you save the top, template. There's hundreds of elements where you can like design a, an email very professionally, just FYI in the builder. Yeah. So I could throw an image in here. By the way, um on Chrome, I, I this is a little issue with me. Uh so I you I have to go on Safari to to use the template. They're actually looking into it. See, I can't drop it. But mo you would normally be able to just drop these in here, build your email. And then in your automations, when you already have them built, you would simply just choose that template like that. And then all you need to do is not do anything. You would just choose the template because it looks better. It looks, it, when I say it looks a thousand times better. So, if you wanted to, you could simply, actually, this is probably even better to do. You just go here, copy all this stuff, go into marketing, go into templates. We'll just edit the one we already have. And we can call this uh, rep. Actually, we have to name it the same, right? C1 uh, email number one. And I can just, you know, paste paste it in here i would edit it by the way if anybody ever wants to know the best formatting of an email a little tidbit here is 18 18 point get all my things out uh and one and a half lines
And so yeah, so I you would can, add it this. you can pre build you can pre build all this for your customers, you know, yep. well in advance. Especially if you're niching down a little bit, you you'll use the same thing for all the plumbers or all the dentists. Right. So you don't have to build it every single time. It's built inside your snapshot as you kind of progress. So let's yep. get back on track. I don't, I didn't mean to derail you here on email builder. No, no, no but... you're good. Yeah, you're okay. Good. Um. Okay, so now if we take a look in the automations, remember we looked to see active enrolled. But I clicked the link, right? I clicked that trigger link and, and went over to leave a review. Now, if you if somebody clicks the link and they don't actually leave a review, it's still going to remove them, right? Because in their mind, they've already clicked it, whatever it might be. We're just, you know, we're playing safe. And I did a good review, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I go to enrollment history, here's my test, Riggle Conway. And it got pushed into the review link, clicked, got removed, and they won't be contacted again. And that's, it all just works. It works out of the box. And that's the full reviews management package. That's that's it. Okay, so Jason, can you share a little bit about pricing and why the pricing is the pricing? I don't know if you do two ninety seven a month, one ninety seven a month. Do you guys charge $1,000 a month or more? Like, what is the pricing you've set? the stage on just to get the ball rolling or is it free trial and if so who's covering the sms if that's part of the sauce you know yeah and so you know it, this also tackles some of the questions that were asked yesterday um so you know when we covered the the pricing yesterday we said hey 297 for the retainer service right now when we talk about this trial we're talking about this free trial right and so that beg begs the question well man if i'm setting up you know, do I set up a domain? I set up, you know, uh, or sorry, an email. I set up phone numbers, all this other stuff. You know, who's paying that? Do I, you know, charge a client? So look, here's the way we look at it is when we do a free trial, it's a free trial for the client. Okay. We are going to tap into their existing client list, right? There's, sorry, their existing customer list. Now, the idea is we are going to provide that for free. If it costs us 10 bucks to get a phone number and some text credits, we're going to do that. It is one of the best ROI investments that you'll ever make in your business covering these little expenses here and there. Because in the end, we got to look at our perspective. And we talked a little bit about, oh, again, I, I'm confusing Q&A. So it was only Q&A last night as well. Um, we, we talk about customer lifetime value. If I have to spend, let's say it's a hundred bucks, which it's not even remotely close to that, that you spend setting up your client account. Let's just say it cost me a hundred bucks. That is to land a $297 uh, dollar a month client, right? It, it, you know, one of the beauties of this business is the insane ROI, right? Um, so Let's look at the price just really quick. The price 297, again, recommended minimum pricing. I kind of mentioned that is we like to say, look, what's the what is the a price that I can charge that I don't have to feel weird about it, um, especially when I'm brand new? Like, ah, oh, is that too expensive? Can I afford it? $297, majority of businesses on the planet are gonna have no problems, uh, no problems spending that type of money. What is the cost to me? Well, if if for well for one, if I'm on a free trial of guy level, then I I I don't have the ninety seven dollar a month plan that I would have. Um, but let's just say I I'm on the ninety seven. Let's just say straight up, I pay ninety seven bucks. So I have ninety seven bucks that comes out for the guy level, and you're probably looking at uh, is it like ten twenty bucks tops to set up a phone number and domain so I can get an email set up and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm looking at at you know what like a hundred and. Uh, 20 bucks or whatnot, but that's for one client. I can get up to three clients on that same plan and only have to pay for the phone and the domain. So bottom line is what I'm looking at, I'm looking at at least a 60% type, 60% uh, profit. I'm, my math might be a little off, but I'm just trying to remember the slides from yesterday with one client. And I'm looking at up to 83% or so when I have up to three clients um, in terms of what it's costing me out of pocket to provide that service. So it's a high profit margin service, even though I'm charging a little amount of money. Now that also gives me flexibility, right? Some people are like, ah, I'm nervous. Cool, charge 197. If you wanna charge 197, charge 197. Remember the whole process here. We're just trying to get our foot in the door with this client so that we will ultimately offer all of our services, right? And so, but even if I offer just rep management, and let's just say the average client sticks with this for 10 months, just I'm using, doing this for math purposes only. 
10 months at 297 bucks is $2,970 that it cost me potentially a hundred bucks to land. And again, that's just first client, the second, third, fourth clients won't cost me that much money to land. So we cover the cost for text message. We cover the cost for the phone number because we want to get this client on board to say yes with as little friction as possible so that they can then commit to us and we get that customer lifetime value, which is going to stack up the more services that we offer. So that's typically how we will do it. Yep. Yeah, I love this. So can you also talk about the timeline of when you land the Trojan horse versus when you expand? Because like when I teach them my five day challenge, I usually tell them charge a setup fee, even if you're only doing a trial to cover A2P and text, if you feel comfortable, put together a beta of five customers, if you feel comfortable. And that's the launch strategy. Eventually, when you're past that, like 25 client mark, you don't need to be launching anything. You can charge probably 300 bucks a month and be fine. Yeah, yeah. And that's important to note that, that you remember, we're just doing this because we're just getting started, right? We don't yep. necessarily have to offer trials the rest of our lives. Um, it is just to get a prospect to say yes, so we can get started, so we can get results that we can then leverage results going forward to land future clients, because then our sales conversation changes. It's no longer, hey, you know, I can do this for you. It's now the conversation is, hey, we're doing this right now for Jack's Plumbing over in Chicago. We're looking for a plumber here in Miami that can use more reviews, use more customers and jobs. Can you handle more work volume right now? That's my conversation now. I'm not saying, well, here's what I could do. I'm saying, here's what I'm doing right now for Jack's Plumbing. We're going to do it with a plumber in this area too. Is that going to be you or not? Right? Yeah. So now I have more leverage because I'm getting the results. And so I want to get that quick win. I want to get those results as soon as I possibly can. And I did, to your point really quick, I did say, look, if you guys, if 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 it puts you out of, dis, you know, it puts you in discomfort to have to pay for a phone number and a domain, cool. If you want to charge a setup fee, do that. Just understand it just takes away a little bit of, adds just a tad bit more friction to what is a very simple, low friction process. But you have complete freedom to do what you want to do. In the end, I want to get the quick results. If I can do that in 24 hours, cool. I'm having the conversation in 24 hours to then convert to the retainer and say, all right, cool. See how it, see how it works. This is what it's doing. The investment to keep moving forward is this. And that point, uh, sorry, as soon as I close that deal and we're set up and we're running, I want to have the conversation pretty shortly after that to start talking about the other opportunities that we uncovered during the initial discussion that we can now start building upon and add rocket fuel to the strategy that, hey, you already see this is working. Now it's time to add some rocket fuel. The next opportunity I see is my message marketing service. The same list of people that we just asked for reviews they are hunkering and hankering for an offer, right? So what kind of special, what kind of offer do you have that's just sitting there right now that we can tap into our business ATM, pull some money out, and then continue to build from, right? So I'm, I'm already moving into the next strategy because I already have the, di sorry, the, uh, the diagnosis, right? I already had the symptoms that they had. So now it's time to build. So I'm going to move fast. I want to move as fast I as I that. can. I can get another service yeah. sold in the first 30 days. And I'm, I'm all on board for that. Is it all going to work out that way? No, but it's always at the forefront to remember that the more services I offer, not only more sticky they're going to be and, and more money I make, but the most important thing, it's the most value I'm able to provide for that client. So it's up to me as the doctor to help and heal my client. And so that's the goal. I love that. And I don't know about you guys and gals. I don't want to sell ice cream and go back and be like, let me charge you for the ice cream cone for five cents, right? <laughs> right. So I, I very much, I feel very synergetic to what you're saying. The the couple of guardrails that you want to pay attention to, especially if you are in the beginning stages of ever running um, SMS campaigns in general, um, you want to have a limit of your budget. So like maybe do it, you know, this kind of a model with a small list of maybe a hundred people. If you load up a list of 10,000 people and run text, you're going to, you're going to rack up a pretty big tab, which is not the intention because our, our intention is get you in the door within 24 hours. I mean, my five day challenge, I say within 72 hours, you have to onboard and get them an experience, but 24 hours is even more aggressive. So go with the small list if you can, that is reasonably activatable and they give you an offer that makes sense. 
with the intention, you're going to sell them on the ascension. Whatever that looks like, it it matters. So have a game plan on that. Jason, can you share some notes on that? I'm sure. Yeah. You know, well, I'm actually glad you mentioned that because, yeah. you know, we actually do with, you know, in, in the actual training where we're doing this is we do say start with a small list. So if they have, you know, so that's a question or a concern that maybe some of you have with the text, like, well, I don't want to be, we have 5,000 people on this. You're not sending this trial campaign to 5,000 people. Okay. What I want to do is send it to the smallest amount of people that I possibly can to generate results because all I'm trying to do is prove that I'm not like every other person that's come up to you and asked for $5,000 to get you more customers. I literally want to show them with my results. Hey, look, I'm, I'm legit. And what I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do for you. Let me just show you. And then we can go and talk about a long-term plan from there. So I just want to dip my toes in just like I'm getting them to dip their toes in, in terms of the service. So if I can get away with a 25 person list or 50, per, you may set that cap. And then, so I get the results. And then what I say is see, all right, as you can see, we got some reviews that have come in. So basically the investment to keep going is whatever. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to finish out the rest of the list. And then month after month, we're going to move into ongoing new customers. So you're just transitioning to the rest of their list. Um, when you actually close the deal, I'm def I'm definitely not going to go out and send 5,000 texts to 5,000 people and get them 2,000 reviews. And all of a sudden they're like, well, you know what? I'm actually good. <laughs> uh, thanks. You know, I, I don't want to fall into that scenario. Um, yeah. I want to give them a taste and yeah. then deliver the rest once they're on board. Yeah. Jason, also, before we go any further, I know, James, you might have a couple of more things to share. Uh, can you sh uh Jason, can you tell us the sales structure of this? So is it a phone call? Is this in person? Is it a Zoom call that you're extend, you know, expanding the sale on? Like what is the mechanism? What is the structure of the interaction? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it all, you know, obviously starts with the prospecting strategy and I'm going to use whatever I want to use, right? It's, it's you know, the prospecting strategy is all what I'm going to be consistent doing because it all works. Cold call works, cold email works, social media messages. It's just, what am I going to do on a day-to-day -day basis? That's what's going to work for you, Okay. So whatever that conversation is, let's just say I'm reaching out with people with cold email and I get conversation going. All I'm trying to do is get to my CQI appointment. I'm trying to get, I'm basically trying to get an appointment set from that where I'm going to have a discussion. That could be a phone call. It could be a Zoom call um, and then, or, or in person. I, I typically have just never worked with anyone in my actual physical location. So I'm just so used to doing phone calls and Zoom calls, just the way it's worked out uh, for me. But in the end, I'm going to have that call where I do the CQI. I close them on the trial. And then again, the plan of attack, I'm always setting the next step before I'm done with them. Hey, here's what we're going to do. In the next 72 hours, we're going to be setting up your campaign. And then I'm going to go ahead and let you know when we're ready to launch. We'll launch it. After that, we'll get some results. And then we will regroup. I will contact you at that time for us to uh, set, up their next, set up our next meeting. Results happen. Your trial happens. Results happen. Hey, you see that? We've got a couple of reviews. Are you available tomorrow, 2 p.m.? Let's hop on a Zoom and kind of go over these results, talk about what maybe the next steps might be. And it's and, just and the, the billing process. timeline. And, and the billing timeline, are you charging them up front or saying, yeah, so hey, we, no we worries? We charge up front. So okay. yeah. if, if I do a trial today and then I close them on Friday for the deal, I'm typically going to send, I'm typically invoicing them Friday and we're going to go. Now, you know, if you if you're one of those people that like, well, I just like all the bills that happen on the first of the month, or they're like that, then cool. Then just uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Were you uh, shorten Was the you... time? To... Oh, um, re uh, re um, oh my God, not retro active. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, where you? Yeah, yeah. You anyway, don't back, you don't either back go bill. every thirty days and build them that way, or you know, pro rate, just, pro rate. for the rest of pro the month, get them on. Yeah. Yes, geez. Perfect. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you guys, if we can do this, you can do it. <laughs> so so just to clarify, Jason, you're saying you charge only after the campaign is done. They got reviews in their in their after the trial campaign. Okay. So the trial campaign up front, you're not charging anything. You're basically saying, hey, let me just prove myself. Pants. Okay. Keep your wallet in your pants. Let me get you some results and then we'll have a con we'll have a conversation okay. from there. So, yep. And so and you're real... yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say real quick, like either my entire agency, if I go back to 2014, and this is just kind of why we do this, um, my entire agency was was built, even before I met Jason, was bu built on leads in advance. And it was a leads in advance strategy where I would literally set up Google ads and deliver leads to non-clients. 
and I would pay for it out of pocket, right? Now, we don't really say like, you know, if you're going to run Google ads. So we said, well, what's the easiest, best way? Reviews is the best way to now kind of do that leads in advance. Now it's reviews in advance. And because it works so well for me, I know Jason used to do um, a different scenario of that, kind of like he would collect the the ad spend of 100 to 200, not charge for his time, and then just deliver leads. It's very difficult. Reciprocity is very powerful. And it's difficult when you do a good job for somebody for them not to want you to continue to do it, especially in the pitch. If you say, ABC Tone, you, uh, oh, you don't want to move forward. I delivered you 10 leads in the last 48 hours. Oh, that's fine because, you know, Kentucky tow towing 30 miles down the street, I'll just go go to them. And they're like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean? So like, you know, there's like levers you can pull in the conversation. Yeah. What what I love about this offer, reviews in general, is that it's a cumulative asset. Like once a review is there, it's an evergreen asset they have forever versus like Facebook ads or Google ads. It's like, ah, let me just throw 100 leads at you. If it works, it works. It doesn't, it's not an evergreen yeah. thing. It's very, it's very visual too. Very yeah. Visual. They see it, that. Like you can't take that away. You can't say, well, it's a bad lead. No, there is literally a five-star review in your face. There is no dispute, <laughs> right? So yeah. it's powerful. I, I wonder how many of y'all are going to get creative. I wonder, let me add the seed in there. I wonder how many of you will, add a video testimonial campaign step to the reviews. I'll, I'll, we won't talk about that, but I'll just add that in there for all you creative people. Let's let's get back on track, James. What else do we need to share for day two? Okay, um, I'm almost done, but so we're, we're at actually a good part of this because um, one thing to also note is that reviews are reviews, right? It's good to get good reviews, but the hidden value of this is the increased ranking of their Google business profile, which if anybody knows, especially like blue collar plumbers, electricians, home improvement, they, if they're ranking in their local area, they they, they have more business that, than they know what to do with, right? <laughs> One of the main ranking factors, and that's what brings us kind of in, if people have gone through the scripts, one of the, the main ranking factors is reviews. And so the more reviews they get, the more their Google business profile shows when somebody's searching for a local plumber. But the second biggest ranking factor, now when I say ranking factor, not the second biggest in terms of all the different ranking factors, but a big portion of the ranking factor is then the business replying to reviews. So that's going to segue me into Go High Level's AI reply to reviews on re in the reputation management uh, thing. I don't know if you guys knew that. So actually, <laughs> let's ask them something. We haven't asked them anything in a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. How many of y'all are following? Is this too much or not enough? Like I, I'm loving this so far, and I've done a ton of these. The, the content with this workshop is pretty in depth. And what I love is the simplicity of the practice, the actual strategy. And I mean, I feel like I can follow this down to the T and I'm not even a techie. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, not smart with a lot of this automation stuff. I'm more of a visionary <laughs> guy. So I need a business partner that knows this stuff like James, <laughs> but yeah, either right. way, how many of y'all are following this down to the T? Should we continue and add an AI mix to the sauce here? Give us a yes yeah. in the chat if you want us to keep going. <laughs> oh, am, am I sharing my screen? You are sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're sharing. Okay, grits and waffles. Grits and waffles showing here. Okay, cool. So, because I, I want to okay. show off one of our students, so that's why I'm gonna I'm in his account. All right, shout out to whoever that was. <laughs> Ahmed, Ahmed, shout out to Ahmed, awesome guy. All right, so he's like a restaurant guy. He used to own a restaurant. Uh, he has clients in California. He's got clients in New Jersey. He's got clients all over. Um, and so he runs this campaign. I'll just go. He has a lot more little stuff in here, but just as you can see, he has like a hundred dollar gift card. Uh, here's his review management system. So he runs them. He'll run the campaign. And then turn it off, wait for more customers, get the list, and then turn the campaign on. Does everybody understand that? That's how he does it. That's like the that's the way it works. So I'll wait two, three weeks, turn the campaign on. But the best part is if you go into Go High Level's reputation, right? It's going to give you a whole overview, which is, by the way, you can 
send a request review directly from in here. We don't need to because we're doing it through automations, but this is also another um, portion. Now, why would somebody use this? Well, if you're at a dentist's office and your client's uh, secretary just has access to this, somebody comes in, they checks in, you can put their contact name in and send them a review request. That's just kind of like a built-in feature from it's Go High manual, Level if you want to do It's a manual that. process, right? A manual process, yep. Yeah. We're obviously doing it with lists. But if you take a look at this stuff, right? So Shermaine leaves a review okay, from this campaign, five stars. Then Grits and Waffles says, thank you so much for your five-star rating, Shermaine Robinson. We truly appreciate your support and hope to serve you again soon. The client didn't write this. AI wrote it. Okay? AI wrote that. AI wrote this. All of these. So... Google is also looking at for ranking factors is yes, reviews four or five stars. Even if they get bad reviews, as long as the client is responding to the reviews, they actually don't really penalize you as much as they used to. They just want the responses because listen, Google knows that not everybody's going to have an amazing experience, which then also kind of shows like, oh, what is this person doing? And nothing ever leaves bad, bad reviews. Now, a couple like here's a four star. I want to actually go over to one of his clients that he laughs about because he's like, they're so busy all the time that they they get a lot of bad reviews. <laughs> and, uh, you know, directly to the site. I just want to show you what AI writes, even on bad reviews. Why can't I find any? Uh, here. The menu items are deceiving, overpriced, blah, blah. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> we apologize for any disappointment you experience with our menu items. We strive to provide high quality food at a fair like this is ai writing this like it I'm, is it I'm, bo yeah boggles my mind i'm pretty sure if one of us wrote it on a busy day while we're running our We'd shop be pissed off and we, we, yeah we might be using sailor language <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and you for sure will not be bringing that client back into the business yeah <laughs> so again more reviews and responses to reviews, very big ranking factors, which brings you into almost like another service. You could, you can, with one click of a button, which is over here. And I think it's it's like it costs us thirty bucks for the account, right, or something like that. Yep, 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 yep. I think, I think, it, I think so. And you can power AI in all areas of high level now, and it's yeah. just we're just beginning. There's live chat. You can train. Um, we have all kinds of integrations. Um, but this workshop's about reviews, but yep. the, the usage of AI is still relevant and you're going to see that everywhere. Yes. And so here you just click auto responses and it takes care of the rest and it That's just runs, it. it runs itself. That's it. <laughs> and yeah, it's crazy. And so like, I don't know, there's some people that maybe have followed me on YouTube or something and you always, you, you hear me always say like i'll oh, forget like not forget ai but it's not ready yet like ai like everybody's oh, creating this yeah. ai agency and all this and they're going away from the foundations ai is amazing when you utilize it within the same foundations that will never change in this business we help businesses get more leads and customers that's all we do the mechanisms most likely won't ever change it's going to be from google or facebook now you got you know you got tiktok and instagram and stuff like that but Nothing still has changed. You're just getting them more leads, more reviews, more, you know, back end sales on message marketing, SEO. This helps with all of that. So I wanted to touch on the AI because I was going to forget. I knew I was. <laughs> I love it. And by the way, this is all in the snapshots, right? So there's three total snapshots, right, James? There's one from the agency website yesterday. Today is a reputation. Uh, Review repeti repetition management, and tomorrow is a different snapshot. Is that right? So when I'm, when I forgot what we talked about, when am I delivering the snapshots? End of day tomorrow, right? Yeah, end of day tomorrow. If you're an existing customer of High Level, we're gonna make all the snapshots available to you at no cost. Okay. If you are watching this and you don't have a, you know you don't have a High Level account, jump into a 30 day trial 
provided by this workshop under James, and he's going to send you everything right away. He has automations yes. built in on his team side. You'll get everything we're talking about. But yes. uh, if you and, and the other way to get it right away is to upgrade. So if you're on the 97 plan already, upgrade to 297 or upgrade to 497 to go down the SaaS route, and you get all these assets anyway. Uh, but if you are not ready to upgrade and you're an existing customer of high level, wait till tomorrow. We'll release it. Uh, we may have a couple of uh, requests uh, for you to do, like leaving a review for us or something like that. <laughs> there you go. But, full circle. <laughs> but, but either way, either way, we'll make it available for everybody. Now, what else do we need to go through for day two? Uh, honestly, we're, we're two hours and 15 minutes. I have that review, okay. re referral automation, but I think tomorrow, I'm going to add it to tomorrow because there's tomorrow okay. is just more about kind of like positioning of okay. packaging with the SaaS and all that stuff. And I'll have time for that. What do you okay. think? Okay, perfect. Not I think that sounds people. good. That sounds good. So here's what I'm going to ask everyone to do. Um, we're going to do a QA and a uh, if you guys have time. You guys have time? Okay. Yeah. We'll do a QA and a for Jason and James. Um, so it's one sixteen. We're going to do rapid fire Q&A to one thirty. So I'm on Central Standard Time. So 15, 20 minutes of Q&A. And before you type in your question, I want you to type in the word Q. So I know that's a question versus a bunch of comments that are happening. So type in a Q. And what I will do is do rapid fire. We'll do 30 second answers. You guys can take turns. So First question here, let me go ahead and refresh my screen. You know what? Let me get on my phone. My phone is a lot easier to find the comments. I don't know why. When you're live streaming, it's usually easier. I think I think comments load faster on mobile devices or something. Uh, let's see. Okay. First queue. I'm waiting for... Well, I don't oh, see it. Let me. Okay, perfect. I just had to click in here. Okay. All right. First question. Let me go ahead and go to all comments. Go to the very first one. Um. Okay. Uh. First person's asking, "How do I get the daily data from the client?" I think what they're talking about is a list. Uh, yeah. So uh, like I mentioned on this one, um, Ahmed, who's running this for a lot of restaurants, it, it could come sporadically, meaning you just set this up with your, uh, client, right? So if you're going to be doing ongoing reputation management, you just tell the client every week, I need a list every two weeks or every month. Um, there are ways to just zap in the contact information but I can't really speak on that because it depends on what the system that they're using. For example, some POS systems, if it's like a restaurant, let's say, um, we can we can zap uh, the all the new sales that come in directly into Go High Level, which will then automatically uh, tag them reactivation review or request. It would be request review, request review, which would send them directly down uh, down that path of uh, asking for a review. Got it. Okay. Or it's just collecting um, lists. Okay. Cool. Um, how does reviews ranking factors work? We have amount of reviews replying. What else? Jason, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, without trying to figure out very technical things, you know, it, I, I think the question is like, hey, how, how does it really influence? You know, in the end, it's a matter of how many reviews and the rating and what, as James kind of alluded to, you know, what are the responses? If you just focus on those sort of things, um, that, that is a factor in determining what Google is going to show in terms of the maps listings. Um, you know, location is always going to be a priority. Like if I'm right next door to a one-star business, it's still going to show me that one-star business more than likely right in my face. But when it comes, when all things else are equal, that's when other factors start taking place, and 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 G, you know, Google Business Profile goes well beyond just reviews, right? There's there's content, how active is it? There's other factors out there, you know, what is the name, address, phone number, the NAP listing situation looking like? Um, but reviews is just one of those influences. In the end, we keep things very simple. We know the more reviews a business has, and the more good reviews a business has, the better that business is going to do from not only technical ranking type 
um, uh, uh, things, but also just in business overall. Absolutely. Um, got a question here for, for, for from someone international. Uh, do you have any experience working with the Greek market and the pricing that can be applied? So let's address international pricing versus domestic. What are your thoughts? Uh, how do they find research around that? Yeah, it, well, just what we typically say in our program is, you know, for one, you can work with anyone around the world. I personally have worked with people in Australia and and uh, Japan and just everywhere else. My whole philosophy on it is, and what I just tell people is like, look, if I want to charge two ninety seven a month for reputation management, I charge two ninety seven a month for reputation management. I don't care where they're at, and I don't care what that looks like in their currency. That is the value that I want to get from it. Um, in the end, it's a combination of what do you want to get from it? Or if you're just like, well, Jason, that's not going to work for me. Okay, cool. Just look in your market for marketing services, start doing some Googling, see what the competition is doing and start somewhere, right? Just start somewhere. Cause remember just pricing is literally just a component of your confidence. It's how, it's how you can charge 297 for this. Cause I said, Hey, that's recommended minimum pricing. But we have people that can come in and charge $500 or $1,000 for the same exact service. It's all what the value uh, that I that I communicated in and the confidence that I have communicating that value. In the end, that's all pricing is. Absolutely. And, and, to, and to add a small note to this, I've seen agencies charge well over $100,000 for a snapshot like this. They're big franchises here in the yep. U.S. And they then... <laughs> stack on a maintenance fee, which we know there's really not much of any maintenance except for that relationship maintenance. Uh, but, you know, to Jason's point, price is a reflection of your confidence, 1,000%, which is why we say don't do free trials forever. We want you to move up. Yeah, uh, okay, sure. uh, Jesse's asking, is there any way to get a free step-by-step walkthrough help with setup on go high level. So one cool thing about James's offer is he has his own private high level training completely outside of this workshop. Can you share a few notes about that, James? Yeah. So, and I mentioned in the beginning, so some people may have came in uh, middle and whatever. So we, for everybody that doesn't know, we've been teaching marketing, a marketing agency, SMA, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, it's for a long, long time. So go high level, we brought into our own coaching program and created an entire go high level training on only the things that they need to run this business. So some of the things that you wouldn't need, for example, if you're a coach and utilizing it, cause I'm also, you know, coach and I utilize it for my coaching program. There's a lot of things that I use in, in go high level for my coaching program that nobody needs for running a market agency. So the the training that we have, which is maybe, I don't know, 50 videos, it it's set up that says, hey, are you going to use lead gen? Are you going to be running uh, lead gen services? If you are, this is the module you need to learn, go high level in. If you're doing reputation management, here's the four videos on setting up reputation management. If you're doing message marketing, here's the five videos on message marketing. So based on what you want to accomplish, like Jason said, maybe in the middle, What's what's the ultimate goal of what you want to do? That's the module you're going to work in. So that's the training that we have. Yep. And for I've anybody who gets on a, a trial. Yeah. Yeah. So if you jump on a trial or upgrade under James. Or upgrade. Yeah, yeah, of course. You get access to it. And for you to do that, go to this link called gohighlevel.com slash James Workshop Offer. Uh, now, if you're already an existing user and don't want to upgrade just yet, wait till tomorrow, end of day. We'll provide all these things over to you and uh, make it happen. Let's go with the next question here. Uh, let's see, a few more minutes. Um, how long should the trial last? We we shared our cadences that as short as possible. So yeah. if you can if you yeah. can reach back out the same day and close them, sure, do it. Yeah. But you never was... offer a seven day trial or a thirty day. You never offer trials by time. It's trials by result. As soon as I get the results, I'm on the phone calling them. I want to capitalize on that uh on that um on that result not wait out another couple days or because i said oh it's going to be five days I, I just go for the result love it um uh, someone's asking is all this available with your lmb training i don't know what that is yes the as our coaching, coaching students oh, yeah coaches. Students. okay cool um jordan's asking how do i propose the value of ongoing reputation management to the client Getting reviews initially is great, but what if it's a construction company that only does a couple of jobs a month? 
I, I I don't think anything changes. I mean, if you're looking for you know to put a an ad onto your to your house, you want to make sure that that contractor has something, right? Um, and yeah, I, I mean, think for a contractor yeah. who's making a hundred thousand dollars a job, won't have a problem paying a couple hundred bucks to get four, five, six new reviews per month to build up his his leverage and his uh, marking on the local area. Yeah, I think I and then. I think that was good. And then here's the thing. Certain industries value reviews more than others. Like a restaurant space, their you know sensitivity to reviews is a whole lot more than like a construction company who has B2B contracts with a city that are not out there in the same market right. the same way. So pay attention to these industries and economics behind it because uh, it doesn't it's not going to resonate well with someone who doesn't care about reviews. And if you want to move fast, like you have your core group of services, you're not meant to work with everybody. Not everyone's going to be a good fit for you. Right. So make it easy on you, not the other person, not like, oh, but, well, they only do this. So how do I how do I manipulate everything that I'm doing and change it all up so I can help this one person? No. How about you just go find someone else that is already a perfect fit for your business? Again, you're going to make way more money by saying no to be the people that are not a good fit for you than you are by saying yes to every opportunity that comes across your table. Yeah. What, yeah. what you said is so profound in the agency world and the biggest mistake most agencies make. They have no clue how to scale. They know how to sell offers in the beginning to get the churn going, but they usually don't know how to scale. And that is built in the assembly line. And the only yeah. way you can build an assembly line is by saying no to a ton of people. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, I've never seen this question, but I'm laughing. Uh, Christian said, uh, is there a difference between being a high-level client and a go high level client. I'm with GHL and I'm willing to upgrade with your link, but just one clarification. <laughs> it's great. the same. It's it's the same. High level is the same. Some domain squatter took the name highlevel.com. So we didn't want to waste resources going after that. But high level and go high level is the same. Uh, but yeah, jump into uh, a trial here. Okay. So 128, let's take two minutes, uh, James uh, and Jason, to kind of set the stage for tomorrow. Um, I know there's going to be more questions coming in. Uh, feel free to jump in there and our community teams will jump in there as well. Answer as many questions as we possibly can. Uh, but what can we expect tomorrow? What are some homework and expectation that you may give us? So I, so homework wise, I would, for anybody who hasn't posted that arms reach met, uh, method, which then go back and watch the replay from yesterday, I would encourage you to do it because we are. I'm getting messages even now for people that were on yesterday that says I like they they're like speechless. They like didn't realize it. And look, there's no guarantee that's going to happen, but it's not going to hurt. And it gets kind of that that feeling of action and the ball uh, moving. Then tomorrow, I'm going to go through the the kind of like tie in that agency site with um, with the referral automation. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that I can do, but I'm going to try to hone in on just that little try to keep it simple. Um, I think that a Q&A session for a lot of stuff we talked about would maybe make that a little longer, but I'm going to talk uh, directly about packaging the services and tying it into utilizing Go High Level SaaS Configurator. But you don't need to use Go High Level SaaS Configurator, but this is just kind of what we've done in the past and how yeah. to package, how to sell it, um, you know, kind of little tips and tricks on on setting all that up. Got it. And can you, are you able to share some ideas of how to get the leads in the agency business? Like whether it's cold calling or cold emailing, are there anything we can do on the prospecting side, maybe for a few minutes to yeah, just yeah. share yeah, ideas we, of, we, okay. Yeah. We have, uh, okay. we have some, some stuff up our sleeve to show you guys. All right. I figured. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Y'all we'll see you tomorrow, 12 o'clock EST. That's New York time. For those of you that are watching international, same format, same thing. Tomorrow we'll do a bigger Q&A as well. And if if this has been insightful for you, please post, uh, take a picture if you want, or you know, grab a clip of the recording that you're watching and tag James and Jason on Instagram and Facebook, as well as High Level, and just let the world know that you are taking part of this three-day workshop High Level's putting together. And I want you all to win. I promise you, the worst thing you can do is hide behind these workflows and technology and automations. 
I rather have you all dial in smile. <laughs> that's that's my mentality. Right. Um, so we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same link, same uh, exact everything. And uh, we're going to have a lot, a lot of, lot of things. Are you doing any giveaways? I forgot about it. Are you doing any giveaway yeah. today? Okay. So I forgot about it too. So I'll tell you what, let's get, let's give a hat away. Cause I didn't give that. And then I'm going to say tomorrow I'll make up for the giveaways I was supposed to do today. So tomorrow will be <laughs> double giveaway day. Um, I, I I'm feeling ex depending on how much engagement yesterday's engagement was unbelievable. Um, and today was a lot of walkthroughs. So I understand people are like paying attention, yeah. but if, tomorrow I can give some massive stuff away, but let's give a okay. hat away. Okay, perfect. Um, so, let me have uh, let me have you shoot a uh, a quick quick video because you're gonna have to create content anyway. Shoot a quick video and post and tag high level and post and tag James, and I will let you. I'll I'll take a look at our high level social media and see who uh, created a post and tagged everybody. And James, uh, first thing tomorrow, I'll announce a winner for that story posting. How about that? Even better. Perfect. Okay, cool. Perfect. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. All right. Thanks a lot. Later. Appreciate it. Bye.